Suppose we want to compose the tangent with the inverse tangent function. To do this, we need to figure out the domain and the range to see how they compose. So first of all, let me call the tangent function f. So f of x equals tangent of x. So then the inverse will be the inverse tangent of x. So as it stands, the tangent function does not have an inverse, so we had to restrict that. And we did that within the cycle around the origin, which was from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But tangent of negative pi over 2 and tangent of pi over 2 are not defined, so we did not include them. The range of tangent is all reals. So then with the inverse, the domain and the range are going to be reversed. So the domain is going to be all reals. And then the range will be the domain restriction of tangent. So then doing the composition, let's do f with the inverse. So we would have f of inverse tangent of x. So then the tangent of inverse tangent of x is going to go inside of the tangent function. So because they're inverses, they'll undo, giving us back what we put in, as long as the inside function is defined within our restriction. So looking at the inside, we have the domain restriction on inverse tangent, which is actually all reals. So this one will actually always be defined, as long as x is real. Let's go the other way. So f inverse composed with f would give me f inverse of tangent of x. So tangent of x is going to go inside of the inverse tangent. Again, since they're inverses, they undo as long as the restriction is satisfied. So looking on the inside, we're looking for the tangent restriction. So we're looking for the angle restriction, which is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so let's do some examples, making sure that the domain is satisfied. So let's start with the easier one, which is the first one, because as long as x is real, they will undo each other. So let's do tangent of inverse tangent of, I don't know, let's say 7. So this would be nice if they just undid and left us back with 7, so let me do a question mark to make sure that the domain is satisfied. And the domain of the inverse tangent is the range of tangent, which is all reals. So as long as 7 is real, which it is, they will undo, giving me back the input of 7. Okay, let's do another one like that. Let's say tangent of the inverse tangent of, let's do something negative, maybe like, I don't know, 3 pi. And question mark, this should give us back negative 3 pi, as long as this is in our restriction. And the domain restriction of the inverse tangent is all reals, which is certainly the case. Let's look at the other one. Let's have tangent inverse on the outside. So the inverse tangent of tangent of, let's say, negative 2 pi over 5. So question mark, maybe this is negative 2 pi over 5. Let's check the domain restriction, make sure that's true. So the domain restriction on tangent is the angle restriction, which is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So as long as negative 2 fifths of a pi is more than a negative half of a pi, which it is, then this is true. Okay, one more, a little bit trickier. Let's say the inverse tangent of tangent of 4 pi over 5. Question mark. Maybe this is 4 pi over 5. Let's find out in just a second. So the angle restriction that was on tangent was negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So as long as 4 fifths of a pi is less than a half a pi, which it's not, so that means this is not 4 pi over 5. But tangent of 4 pi over 5 is defined. So we're going to do a clever maneuver here and move the angle. Let me start by drawing the angle into the proper quadrant. 
So four fifths of a pi is somewhere in the second quadrant. So what we're going to do is move the angle, but we're going to keep tangent the same. In other words, the y over x needs to stay the same. Okay, inverse tangent, we can only be looking at quadrants one and four. So in the second quadrant, tangent's negative, so then I need to be looking in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to redraw the angle so that x and y are still going to be those negative opposite. So taking a point on the terminal side of the original angle, I would have negative xy. And taking a point on the terminal side of this new angle, I would have x negative y. So when you divide the two, you're still going to get negative y over x. Okay, so the tangents are the same, so now we need to figure out the angle. This goes back to reference angles. So 4 pi over 5, to get to a pi, I need one more pi over 5. So that reference angle is going to match with the other one, but going from standard position, it's going to be negative. 5 over 5. Okay, so that means that the tangent of 4 pi over 5 is exactly the same as the tangent of negative pi over 5, because the y and the x are still opposite. So doing a little substitution here, replacing the inside function now with tangent of negative pi over 5, which is in the correct restriction. Now these will undo each other. Now we have our answer.